We need to have a conversation. I gotta get some speakers. I'll be right back. What do every single one of these speakers have in common? Oh uh, yeah, they're all two-way, but that's not what we're going for here today. Yeah, they all have waveguides. And guess what? I think I've been doing it wrong this entire time. Well, let's talk about it. Welcome back to the show. My name is Ron. Thank you so much for stopping by another episode of Frequency Friday, and this is gonna be a good one. You guys are gonna love it. Before we begin, just some house cleaning topics for you. I'll run through them as quickly as I can. New Record Day is on social media, so if you're not following us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube community. Make sure you're checking those often. We are posting often and we want to be able to engage with you guys. Another big change here at New Record Day is we are focusing on Patreon way more than we have in the past. So one thing that we are doing and we've already started is every single week, my wife and I are gonna sit down in front of the camera. All right, patrons, uh, Ron from New Record Day, Sarah from New Record Day. Um, and, and Natalie. And we're going to talk shop. We're going to talk all things hi-fi. She's going to ask me questions about what gear I have in for review, how it's going, what I think so far, early impressions. So this is going to be a deep dive into what is going on here at New Record Day. And it's an insider edition. It is a channel chat. It is all things that I think you guys would love to know. So yeah, Patreon, big changes, super excited about it. Links are down below. Thank you so much for considering it. We certainly do appreciate it. Now, just a very quick story before we jump into the meat and potatoes of today's episode. Not too long ago, I was doing some sound clips for a bunch of speakers that I have in house. Ooh. And I was running through every single one of them. When I do the sound clips, as you know, I have them basically face forward and then I have the mics right in front of the speakers. I'm monitoring with my headphones and that's how I'm capturing the audio. Anyhow, when I was doing these sound clips, I realized something with the speakers facing forward. I took off my headphones and I started listening to them from the listening position, no toe in at all. And when I got to specifically the Bucart S400s, I was stunned and not for any good reason. I was stunned at how the center image sounds so diffused. And it just so happened around that same time, we have a new Record Day subscriber that hit me up on Facebook Messenger. We chat pretty often about reviews and what the heck is going on in the hi-fi world. He knows who he is and he's totally epic. He's totally awesome. And he's a million times smarter than I am. Anyhow, we got to talking about what I was experiencing and he was also surprised. Ron, those speakers should image like a mother bear. I mean, they have controlled directivity. They have a waveguide. You should not be hearing a diffused center image. It should be pinpoint. It should be rock solid. What the heck is going on? And so I explained to him how I had the speakers set up at the time that I was doing the sound clips. And he asked me, well, have you experimented with Toen? And I thought, well, yeah, I mean, I've had them, you know, at my shoulders and they sound much, much better if I had them towed in pointing at my shoulders. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. Ronnie boy, class is in session. Check out this article, read it, and then let's have a conversation. And so I'm going to link to the article. I want you guys to definitely check it out. Ultimately, what this article is suggesting is that with any speaker that has a waveguide or is controlled directivity, what you really want to consider doing is extreme towing. Oh, I'm not talking about pointing at your ears. No, 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 no. I mean extreme toe in. Check this out. Try towing in the speakers considerably further. In fact, 
point each speaker roughly at the furthest listening seat from it. Also goes on to say after we do the toe in, now that's better because as you go to the right, the intensity of both speakers drops. When properly balanced, achieved by adjusting the degree of toe-in, the image with controlled directivity speakers stays steady across a wide range of listening positions. And no matter how much the listener moves their heads or shifts in their seats, the image becomes independent of the listener's movements and provides a surprisingly relaxed listening experience. It is possible to get this effect in some installations, even for listeners seated almost directly in front of the left or right speakers. I actually think I agree with this. And that's the freaky part is when I'm not critically listening and I'm not sitting in the middle, I'm sitting off to the left or off to the right, and Sarah and I are watching movies or watching whatever Georgia wants to watch. I think lately it's been PJ Masks. PJ Masks, oh, PJ Masks. Anyhow, I've noticed that as I've been listening to these speakers with this aggressive tone, it does to a degree reflect what was just said in this article, is that it doesn't sound like things are wonky and I'm only hearing stuff over from the left. I'm actually hearing what appears to be a center image where it should be, it's locked in. And that is, that is something that is worth chatting about. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go out to the listening room. I'm gonna show you step by step how to do this. It's gonna be a great tutorial and we will come back, we'll have a conversation about it. I'll tell you what I noticed, what I liked, and we'll, yeah, we'll peel back some layers. Have some fun. Let's do this. Alrighty guys, you are going to laugh when you see just how easy this is to do. JBL 530s, they are face forward, straight into the room. We don't want that. We're going to mess around with toe-in. So the very first thing that I do is I take the speaker off of the stands. Alrighty, next step. You could eyeball this, but let me show you what I do. So the truth be told, any laser pointer would work. I use this uh, Bosch electronic tape measure, and this is really handy for these kinds of jobs. And I just kind of place that right in the center. Just take a look down, see where the laser is, try to get it right smack dab in the middle of the speaker stand. And then just so this guy doesn't move around, I'll tape it down with masking tape. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll have Amazon links, affiliate Amazon links below if you wanna pick up one of these. I love it, I use it all the time. Alrighty, so easy enough. I'm gonna make sure this guy is turned on. There we go. And then what I like to do is I have a spike down here that I'm gonna press my foot on so my top left corner does not move around. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently pull out the uh, speaker stand and I'm just gonna, see how I'm doing this? I'm just gonna move this to tow the speaker stand in, and then I'm going to take a look at where my laser is pointing at the couch. Alrighty, so if we take a look, we're we are pretty much where we would be if we were pointing the speakers on access to the listener. That is gonna be basically right at your head. We're a little bit off if we were to be, oh, I don't know. maybe somewhere in there, we would be pretty much spot on. That's not what we're gonna do. So what we're gonna do is we're going to tow in even further. And I'm just gonna move this gradually. And wow, look at that. I'm pretty much right where I want to be. Yeah, so I think that should probably be pretty close to a good starting point. So if I was the listener sitting next to the sweet spot, which is over here, you can see it's hitting my my mighty one pack. I don't need six like the rest of you guys. I only need one. And um, yeah, so it's crazy. It's actually crossing in front of you, which is so weird to look at, but don't look at it. Listen, <laughs> don't look at your speakers. Just listen to your speakers. And yeah, from here, it's a matter of taste. You can be more aggressive with it, right? You could swing it out 
further this way, or if you wanna be less aggressive, you can move it back in the other direction. Something to think about, and I hope that this was helpful. Super simple to do. Obviously, you do the exact same steps with the other speaker, and before you know it, you're ready to rock and roll. I hope that was informative. I hope that helped you understand what I meant by extreme toe-in. It's so crazy to look at these speakers that are essentially crossing right in front of you. I mean, I have these things pointing, you know, to basically who would be the person sitting next to me. And when I did that with the Bucard S400s, well, color me lucky, Sally. What? Things got pretty darn interesting in a very good way. I felt like, what I had was kind of the best of both worlds. I had a rock solid pinpoint, we're talking laser line center image. That sucker, you could trace it. It's just there. It's the opposite of what I was hearing with the S400s facing into the room. And on top of that, I had a really decent stage to work with. Wide, deep, yeah. I had a performance in the room and if you guys know, I'm crazy about soundstage, so this is something that you guys should absolutely try if you have a speaker that has a waveguide. Let's slow down for just a minute. In the article, and I want you guys to read it, it does talk about one of the advantages in doing this is that you are minimizing, you're minimizing the negative effects that the first reflection is gonna have because those speakers are towed in so aggressively they're not gonna be smacking up against the wall so quickly and making a mess of things. True, yes, but let's not forget, let's not ignore vertical off access and the ceiling or the ground. So there is no free lunch in any of this kind of stuff. I do think that you should still absolutely try it and I do think that if you have any speaker with waveguides, then <laughs> treat the ceiling, <laughs> totally treat the ceiling. You should do it because then you try this, you're, you're now moving in a very interesting direction. Is it perfect? Is it ideal for everybody? I don't know, I can't answer that question. I can tell you this. I prefer the S400s and I prefer the JBL 530s using this aggressive toe-in, and even the Klipsch RP600Ms. And in every single one of those situations, I liked what I was hearing. This seems to be an interesting thing to try, and it's free. So, <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that. And as far as I'm concerned, specifically with the Bucard S400s, it had the it had the biggest gains with that particular speaker. That transformed what I was hearing with the S400. It went from, yeah, this is certainly good. I see what all the hype is all about. They're a very good speaker. They do a lot of good things, but this, ooh, okay. Old Mutton Chops Bernay is digging what he's hearing. And let me tell you, I think you will too. So don't be afraid to try this, experiment with it. Give it a shot and happy Frequency Friday to you. Thank you so much for stopping by. We do appreciate it. We will see you guys in the next video.